welcome back to our channel. Um, today is Monday, the day after we got back from Vegas. Hence the reason I look like this. Puffy eyes, uh, fatigue, Guys, everything. we have been in bed. Today is Monday and we've been in bed. It's already going to be 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So we are worn out. I don't even know what it is. The time change. I don't know. Something. Everything. The heat. Me. Just walking. The heat was crazy, guys. But uh, we're fixing to go get some um, food. And we're going to talk about it. But um, we'll see you in a bit. Where are we going? Boy, right here. It's a... Uh, Boy, right here. What kind of chicken is it? It's uh, a, like a grilled chicken. And it comes with like rice, beans, tortillas, and it's our, we, I like it a lot. It's not my favorite place, but I do like it a lot. My kids don't like it. Um, so we have to get it whenever the kids are at home. Yeah. Because if not, we're going to stop at two different places to get food. Sorry, I'm having hair issues. But yeah, we only get it when we're by ourselves, um, just because the kids don't like it. So we're on our way there. Yeah. All right, guys. Welcome back. We finally got home for Reggio. I'm excited. We never have this, guys. Never have this. Mm. So we always get the half chicken, guys, because it comes with the grilled chicken. Literally half a chicken. Yeah, the whole half a chicken. It comes with the rice and these tortillas. And the best salsa ever. And if you eat there, they actually have like chips. What do you want some? No, you want some? It's a poor video. I know y'all don't ever like this, but we always get it when y'all not. Dark chicken, white around. chicken. Yeah, so on the next video, you'll be seeing clips of our trip, his pool tournament. Um, just stuff. What we did in Vegas, what we didn't do in Vegas. <clears throat> so, guys, we want to give you our advice. On going to Vegas with all this COVID thing and you know, ever since 11 I don't know when's the last time you guys travel. This is our first time going Southwest Airlines. We've always uh, flown American, even though it's been like seven, eight years with American. We were actually able to reserve our specific seat. Oh yeah, this is kind of weird. That and here okay. you have to check in online. I'm assuming as you check in is your scene or your boarding arrangement, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Like A1 through 30, A31 through 60, then Robert B, went with the 30. Robert's ticket was with a group of guys, his his pool team his pool team. Mine was by itself because I I paid for my ticket. Robert's ticket was free. Bring some chips, please. Um so anyways, um so we ended up having to check in and we literally checked in at the same time that they did. One guy had the confirmation. He ended up having to check in, check them in. And then Robert, since I was at work, checked me in. Literally same time, same everything. Guys, he, they were like 20 something and I was 30 something, something like that. I was like 11 people behind them. Which, and they were, in the long run, it didn't even matter honestly because Everybody just lines up and they don't even care. They don't even look at your ticket. You just walk up and scan it. So basically, it didn't even matter where you were at. You know, Southwest, it's they it just you straight line up and find us open seat. Yeah, it's open seating. No uh, reserve seating. Um, don't know if I like that or not. Mm -hmm. um, we had friends go on Southwest and in the afternoon flights actually get delayed. Right. Um, Three or four different friends. And I don't think the weather was bad or anything. They just got delayed. Mm -hmm. um, if you haven't been to Vegas yet, they've got a new monorail, which I thought was really cool. It's off the strip, but it connects uh, MGM, um, the Lynx, Westgate, Sahara. That new convention center they have, it stops there too. Mm -hmm. 
It's really we cool. stayed at Westgate, and then there was one more stop after us, which is at Sahara. Mm -hmm. Um, the monorail was very clean. Mm -hmm. Um, they every clean nine it minutes. Every trip. Yeah, every nine minutes it'll come around. Mm -hmm. Go northbound or southbound, and um, you buy basically a little pass to go through the gate. And we bought a four-day pass, or, or the 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 uh, lead commissioner um, bought a four-day pass for us, which was like the best thing ever. Yeah. And we went to every casino, got off, you know, walked around everywhere you know we wanted, and then got back on the monorail. We would go somewhere else, drink, you know, till one in the morning, get back on the monorail, and crawl back to the room. <laughs> I mean, it was great. Um, so that monorail they came up with is really, really nice. Like she said, we stay at the West Gate. Beautiful hotel. Um, they have some expensive restaurants. Nah, um, they were expensive, guys. If you're planning on going to the West Gate and not renting a car, you're going to spend some money on food. Uh -huh. um, they have great food, great restaurants. But they got like a Nathan's hot dog, foot long, um, we have 14 to bucks. Share it. I think it's 14 okay. bucks for a foot long hot dog. Two slices of pizza, guys. Not even like the big jumbo, just two regular slices of pizza, 11 bucks. And that's probably the cheapest food you, you'll find. They had a croissant, very good croissant. Sausage nah, it was really good. But it'll run you about 14 bucks. Mm -hmm. um, but that's all inside the hotel. Um, Tables themselves at Westgate, um, craps tables, roulette tables. At I didn't find any table that was lower than a fifteen dollar minimum. Oh yeah. So you know, anybody gambling, I don't know if you're looking for a five dollar minimum or ten dollar minimum, but Westgate the whole time Tuesday through Sunday we were there. All I seen was fifteen dollar minimum. We're actually planning another trip for Xavier on his birthday in April, and so we're trying to get like. Different ideas, what we could do with them, and, and you know, because it's gonna be him and all his friends that are going, and we are sponsoring. <laughs> so we kind of figured, um, probably gonna stay at the New York, New York, or MGM. Mm -hmm. That side, one, we're on the strip already, but two, that monorail connects to the MGM, so we can just take the. Bye -bye. Uh, we can just take the monorail bye bye. to the other casinos that we did last time. The Lynx, uh, Convention Center, Sahara. I mean, all those other, all those. So we don't have to take a bus. We don't have to take an Uber. We don't have to take a taxi. It's a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, guys, we did a four-day pass for 36 bucks, And we use that thing probably six times a day. But yeah, so that's planning a trip with the guys. We're trying to think of what's, what's going to be fun for them. I mean, Vegas is already fun. But the only thing I can suggest is don't be there too long. We were there Tuesday through Sunday. That was a long time. But Literally, if we were there, maybe two, three days tops would have been perfect. I think by Thursday, we were ready to come home. Yeah, we were ready. Overall, the trip was fun. It was nice, honestly, because this part of it was free. <clears throat> Also, if you go to Vegas, if you have time, go to Fremont Street. Huh? Mm-hmm. Old Vegas. Old Vegas. Um, I know they call it Old Vegas, but man, it's it's nice. Mm -hmm. um, outside the little walkway, kind of scary, going the alley. around the alley, that. Mm -hmm. But once you're on the main strip or whatever, with the, where everything's going on, it's nice. I like it better than the actual strip. Yeah. Um, there's more going on, and um, yeah, I like it a lot better. Um, Where the taxis drop you off, it's in the alley. Yeah. So. And prices there are cheaper. Gambling, food, everything. Um, they'll have special like prime rib and shrimp for like twelve bucks. Um, they have another prime rib for like eighteen bucks. Um, and like I said, a lot of the gambling was a lot cheaper. Um, we ate some little restaurant. I compare it to like a, I don't know, like a Denny's or IHOP or something. But man, I think we got out of there for like 40 bucks with both of us. And that was cheap. That's guys. everything. Tip and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the cheapest meals I paid the whole time we were there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we had steak there and everything. It was good. Yeah. Um, mm. Best restaurant we went to? We went there for a breakfast. 
All right, it's called Favorite. And it's it's going through the Lynx Hotel or Casino. Is that what the name of it? You gotta go through it to get out to the street or whatever. And there's like a long walkway. It's off of Vegas Boulevard. <clears throat> Bunch of restaurants, little things to do here and there. They have a, a, an ice bar. That was pretty cool too. Mm -hmm. Especially because it's freaking hot, guys. Hot. So being in there, I'm sure everybody would enjoy it. But the place we went to was called Favorite. Guys, they had the best steak and eggs. 15 bucks. 15 bucks. We were like... It was like a New York strip um, with eggs and toast and papas and like, it was good. Yeah, very good. Um, steak had a lot of flavor. Mm -hmm. I like mine medium and it was actually cooked medium, which is rare because a lot of people don't know how to cook medium. Right. And, um, they made it medium. There's Perfect. a place down the street from that one called Maxi's. Maxine's. Guys. Maxi's? Don't. Maxi's? I think it's Maxi's. It was hot. Don't waste your time there. The prices look good, but food's bland. They don't give you a lot. It's hot in there. And There's just... no restroom. You have to go outside of the restaurant, three doors down, like three stores down, and then she said, go left and blah, blah, blah. There's no restroom. Another place called Hash House. Now, they say there's one here in Texas, but we're actually going to try it here because the line over there was an hour and a half. Uh, wait every know. day the, the, we went by just to kind of check every day was packed but, I mean I've heard good reviews on hash house food looked good on the pictures mm -hmm. and they said it's just big big piles of food we were trying to make our way in yeah. there but I had an hour and a half wait two hour wait I'm like it's not worth that <laughs> the last time we did a trip like this to Vegas by ourselves was probably about 20 years ago mm -hmm. it was because yeah, of the I same was a baby. Thing. Same thing, I was in a tournament just like I was this time. So it was just us two. And we went again eight years ago with the kids. So that one wasn't the same. Uber, um, they start at $3.50, $3.50, right from the get up, get, you know, get go. Taxis. Um, yeah, um, that's just where they start. Yeah, taxi, that's just you sitting in there. <laughs> yeah, that's just you sitting there telling them where you want to go. Mm -hmm. um, if it's three or more, I think they'll do a flat rate depending on where you go. Because when we went to the airport, it was a flat 27 bucks for us. Um, so the guy didn't charge per mile or whatever they charged by. Um, but those are your two biggest things, transportation and food. Um, and then what you're going to spend on gambling too. We, then that's the next thing. Like I said, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of uh, slots, uh, a lot of the tables, $15 minimum, $25 minimum. They have some 25 cent slots, but you got to look for them. They have the peony slots, but... Or if you do any kind of table stuff like that, you're probably going to be better off being on the electronic game because yeah. those are cheaper. Now, we, we do roulette, and uh, we actually found, even though we're staying at the Westgate, we actually found that we enjoyed the uh, machines better at Treasure Island. Mm -hmm. And um, That yeah. and then the, um, <laughs> the bartenders or the waitresses keep coming by. Mm -hmm. Keep bringing you drinks. Keep bring, I mean, as long as you're playing... They keep bringing you drinks like yeah. nonstop. Yeah. We were getting wasted just on shots. Uh, yeah. And and just playing. So it was it was it was a good time. A lot of people said, No, you gotta you gotta go outside the hotel to win. And when we left we went we went straight to Treasure Island and we started winning over there, so which is good. We ended up um so when you're walking through the hotels guy, there's um people that selling and I know everybody's gone through this timeshare. <laughs> so we're walking and actually Robert match was at nine o'clock in the morning. And then he was gonna have another match at nine o'clock at night. So we had like twelve hours to spare, like to, to waste time. And so we were walking back to the hotel and um all of a sudden someone stopped us and said, Hey, do y'all want some free gifts? Do y'all want this and that? And, of course, we get suckered in and we're like, okay, let's go check it out. Let's go see what's, what this is about. And so they're like, okay, you're going to get free lunch. You're going to have, uh, we're going to give you a $100 visa. We're going to give you $40. We're going to give you a, 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 a four-day, three-night stay, wherever you want to go. Lodging, free, free lodging. You have to pay your way there. 
I'm like, okay, let's let's see what this is about. Guys, don't get suckered in. Do it for the free gifts. Keep saying no, 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 no. <laughs> Stand your ground. Mm -hmm. They want to walk you around. They want to, you know, they have a presentation to do. That's their job. So that's their, you know, that's what they're getting paid to do. Which, more power to you. If that's your job and that's what you like to do. The lady that was with us, she was real cool, real laid back, real nice. We kind of told her, you know, like, no, it's not going to be an option for us. It's not. She still had to do her presentation. She still had to do her thing, which was fine. That's her job. At the end of the day, we walked out with those free gifts and us saying no. I mean, of course, they do try to sell you the timeshare. I think it started out like 700 something a month. Um, and you can go anywhere. You could do this and that. You could whatever. And so it went down to $300 a month. No, it's not. It's not good. It's not. Guys, they went all the way down to like $100 a month. They said, oh, we have one last left at $100 a month. This is the last one. They already told us, okay, never mind. We're going to go ahead and get your gifts. Y'all could be on your way. All of a sudden, someone's going to come running back. No, the manager or whatever. Yeah. We, got, we, got a, uh, uh, we got one for you. We got one for you. This is not. And they came with that. Last gift. Or not gift. Last price. For a hundred dollars a month, and we were still like, nah, we just we, we want our gifts. <laughs> but guys, yeah, we ended up just leaving, saying no. They sent us on our way. We got our hundred dollar visa, forty dollars cash, and free lodging, which we're probably gonna look into that using it for Xavier's trip. Yeah. So I um I was on the crafts machine playing and there were four other guys next to me. The two guys next to me over here, very talkative, very friendly, they're from Florida. And uh, we just started talking and telling them, hey, we just finished that timeshare, you know, thing and um uh, got the hundred dollar gift card. They're like, Yeah, we did one too, somewhere else. It wasn't at Westgate. They ended up doing it somewhere else. Guys, the best tip I was like, that's actually kind of smart. They're both neighbors. They're both best friends. Their kids are best friends. Their wives are best friends. So they go like every vacation together. Well, they went to this timeshare um, thing together, saying they were a couple, both guys. They did the timeshare together, signed the contract, everything together. So basically, they're splitting the, the cost in half. But they're both going to be traveling together as you know two families. Which I'm like. If you're ever going to do a time, if you, if I say don't do one, but if you ever are going to do one, that's probably the best way to do it. Splitting it with someone that you know for sure is going to be using, going to pay and going to be using it with you all the time. And so these two say, but even at that, one person could go with their right, family. Right. And that's what they were saying too. You know, if I don't use it, you use it and you know, um, so they, they plan on you using could, it. Suppose that you can use it as many times as you want a year. If there's availability, mm -hmm. and that's the problem with these timeshares. If there's availability, okay, when we were younger, we did get suckered into to one, and it was so hard to find availability. It was so hard to find um, a date that was open for them, and that's what made me mad. We were with them for about three years, paying monthly, keeping up our dues, everything like that. Not one time did we um, go on a trip on them. We were going on trips, we were doing our thing, but we were paying out of pocket for our trips and paying the timeshare that was not helpful at all. So for us, it was a no-go. Like we were, we're not doing that again. We just were going for the, the free gifts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, now for, uh, uh, the first time we heard about it, we, we were like, oh, this is great. It's gonna be great. Is this not like, you know, but it, we could never set up a date. So the main reason we went to Vegas this time is that my team qualified for a um, APA Nationals or something. I forgot the official title. Uh, basically, it's a it's a trip to Vegas, a tournament up there. You know, I'm in different leagues, and my master's team is the one that made it. <clears throat> one of my master's teams. That happens all the time. Let me clean up in. This one over there. Never fails. Never fails. Um, so uh, our team made it. And um, 20 years ago, guys, I went to one of these uh, for the individuals. And um, 
I thought I was pretty good 20 years ago. And going and seeing people from Tennessee, Alaska, Louisiana, uh, Kentucky, just e anywhere and everywhere. Guys, there's some amazing players out there. But and honestly, guys, these people that play, this is their job. Yeah, yeah. But this is what they do for a living. Right. But 20 years ago, you know, I, I thought I was pretty good. And 20 years ago, um, it kind of opened my eyes like, I got a lot of work to do. I, I, I'm, I'm nowhere near where I thought I really was. And um, so, you know, luckily, fortunately, 20 years later, I was able to go again. And for the last year, I've been busting my butt practicing and all that and uh, trying to get ready, you know, knowing that um, an inch, half an inch, you know, could be the difference between a win and a loss with some of these guys. A dry break could be the difference between, you know, winning and losing. Um, unfortunately, our team didn't win. We didn't get into the money round. Um, you know, it, it's going to happen. We knew there was tough competition, like she said. There's guys there that you could consider semi-pro. I do this as a hobby just because, you know, I got a job and kids and everything, you know. Uh, but some of these guys have been playing full time for the last 20, 30 years and you could tell, you know, mm -hmm. they're just that good. <clears throat> Which is fine, like I said, it's, it, it's great to go against people like that and see where you stand against people like that and that's what we did. And um, I, I learned that I still need work on nine ball. Eight ball, I was competing with these guys and you know, I, I you know, be up three two or down three two going into nine ball. Like, hey, that's fine, you know, because these guys are really top notch. And nine ball is where I could tell you, know, hey, they're a little bit better than me, and you know, so um, they knew better defensive shots and how to get out of defense better than me, which is fine. It's a learning learning experience for me. And um, they also had the cool thing. If you ever go to an APA tournament in Vegas, they actually have mini tournaments. Where you have your main tournament, uh, whether it's teams, Jack and Jill, Scotch Doubles, whatever tournament, then they'll have mini tournaments in between. And these mini tournaments, you pay 20 bucks, you get in, and it's either an eight man or 16 man team or person uh, tournament. And they do them kind of quick. So um, mm -hmm. once they start, you know, you're paying, you're playing whoever, and sometimes it's open tournaments, sometimes it's by your your handicap ranking. You know, it's just different. And uh, the last tournament I got in, guys. I uh, played a guy from New York. He said his his team uh, got knocked out right before the money round. Uh, ended up beating them five one. Which guys? He Which, wasn't that even uh, good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I ended up beating them five one. So I like. And the only reason the guy won that one is because he scratched on the eight. I scratched on the eight. So he gave him the game. Yeah. And um, I thought I was all that, but the person that knocked me out, guys, <laughs> <laughs> she's probably she. Is Three. probably five foot one, probably sixty years old, in a sundress and flip flops. <laughs> she was and, a granny, y'all. And she was from Florida, and I'm like, I seen her walk up, and I'm like, oh, I got this. Like, mm -hmm. man, this ain't nothing. I got this. Ended up missing a, uh, missing a ball on the first first game. And she had like three balls left. She um, ran out. I was like, all right, no big deal. You know, I lost one. All right, all right. Ended up losing two in a row. I'm like, she ran out the second game. I'm like, oh shit. Okay, okay. So I was going on. Guys, here. she was good. Ended up coming back. I was up three two, and it's race to five. And then, um, guys, I'll put her in defensive moves. I was I was sweating putting her in defensive moves, and she had to do two and three real kick shots, hitting the ball and almost making it, like missing it within an inch or two. To get out of the defensive shots that I was I was doing on her, and then sometimes she turned around and put me in a defensive move, and <clears throat> basically she she whooped me. She beat me five four, uh, so I got knocked out of the mini. Uh, but she was a great shot. I mean, but her ranks we looked yeah, up her ranks yeah, she, and she was winning four out of four after yeah, Robert five out of five. Yeah, so she, she was like, winning. She guys. won like five out of five tournaments or something like that. Mm -hmm. So she was no joke. Yeah. But uh, the thing is, you go to any any pool tournament, any pool league. You cannot tell who knows how to play and who doesn't mm -hmm. just by looking at them. A friend of ours, they were still uh, in the tournament after us, and they played a different team. And there was a young young guy, had to be 21, maybe 21. He looked like 80 pounds. 15, really, yeah, reality. 80 pounds, 5'10 or 5'8, 80 pounds. I mean, mm -hmm. a stick. Wearing some uh, loafer, yeah, some loafer shoes, With checkerboard, checkerboard socks. socks. And some some shorts to halfway to his thigh, 
and a shirt that just fit right at the waistline. I mean, this kid, this, you look like he should be a bookworm. Guy, that, that guy could, man, he could shoot. That guy was awesome. So, like, and uh, they beat our friend too. Yeah, so. they ended up beating our friend's team. But like I said, you just don't know just by looking at someone, you know, how good they really are. So if you ever go to one of these tournaments, don't get cocky. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you work defense, defense, defense is the best thing I could tell you. And the fastest tables you can find around, practice on those. Because these tables here, they're fast. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people cannot get used to the fast tables. And so they're hitting the ball and it's just going everywhere. So you have to learn to adjust on that. But um, that's the best advice I can give you. Like I said, um, it was great going back. Um, I can't wait to go back again. Um, shout out to our commissioner, David and Allison Miller. Miller. Uh, man, th that that family there is the best. Mm -hmm. um, they they help pay for the trip and the tournament and hotel and everything. I mean, what they're doing for our league, I mean, I cannot thank them enough. I mean, these people. Very uh, nice, guys. Very yes. nice. Every team that showed up, um, they were taking them out to a nice Italian restaurant on them. Guys, it was like a four course meal, like wine and salad and soup, and then your entree, um, even a cappuccino at the end. I mean, it was it was really nice. They even paid for me. They didn't have to because yeah. you know obviously I was gonna pay for myself, but they even paid for spouses, yeah. and they even got monorail passes to um, for the spouse as well. Yeah. But very nice people, very nice. They doing a lot for the league, which. There's, you know, there's not a lot of people out there that would do that. They no, would usually just pocket the money, but yeah. they are putting all the money back into their players, back into um, to their league. the league. Yeah. So, yeah. awesome people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this wouldn't have been able, this wouldn't have been this great without them. Mm -hmm. I mean, that family there, like I said, they, they, they did a tremendous, tremendous amount for us, and I cannot thank them enough. Yeah, for sure. But, um, With Xavier at his birthday, it'll be kind of fun, too. Yeah. But um, thanks a lot for sitting with us to talk about um, our Vegas trip. And I guess we'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys. Bye.